All right, welcome back everybody with Universal Gravitation. Today we're talking about orbits and we're talking about planets going around stars, uh, moons going around planets, and so on. All right, here we go. Let's talk about this. So this is a great first example because it breaks down a lot of concepts. So let's look at this. If you can really understand this, you're probably good for the whole video. So it says, assume that a satellite with a mass of 500 kilograms orbits Earth 225,000 meters above its surface. Given that the mass of the Earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, and the radius of the Earth is 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters, how far is the satellite from the center of the Earth? Okay, so let's, uh, let's do these problems. Let's see how we can do them. So first of all, what we're looking for is we're looking for how far this satellite is from the center of the Earth all the way to where it's orbiting from, so this R here. Uh, I'm going to put it all the way over here. So R is going to be equal to the radius of the Earth, which is 6.38 times 10 to the 6, plus this 225,000 meters, 225,000 meters. Okay, and when we put this into our calculator, let's see what we get. 10 to the 6 plus 225,000. And the reason why this is important is because this is giving us how far the two masses are from the center of mass of each other. Okay? So we get 6,605,000 meters. Part B says, what is the force of gravity that acts on the satellite? Okay, so what we're trying to do for part B, well, let me label this as A, is we're trying to find how much is this uh, satellite attracted to the Earth, force of gravity. We know that the force of gravity is equal to uh, G, mass of satellite, mass of Earth, over R squared. Let's kind of write this better. The force of gravity will be equal to G, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Mass of satellite, which is 500. Mass of the Earth, which is 5.97 times 10 to the 24. Oops, sorry, I had to squeeze that in there. Uh, divided by how far they are from each other. So we're going to use this number again. So 6,605,000 squared. And let's see what we get for the force of gravity. 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11 times 500 times 5.97 times 10 to the power of 24 divided by 6,605,000 squared. And we get around 4,563.8 newtons. Next question here says, what is the force of gravity that acts on the Earth? So just know that, yes, the Earth is pulling on the satellite, but the satellite is also pulling on the Earth. And what we should know is this force of gravity is going to be exactly the same. So B and C the force of gravity will both be 4,563, but in opposite directions. Okay, so they both have the same force of gravity. Now let's go on to part D. Part D says, what is the acceleration of gravity that the satellite experiences from the Earth? So what we should know is that force of gravity is equal to the mass times the acceleration of gravity. This is the original formula that we used in all the other chapters. So let's find what the acceleration of gravity is of the satellite. We know that the force of gravity of the satellite experiences 4,563.8. We know the mass of the satellite is 500. So now we can find the acceleration of gravity. 4,563.8 divided by 500. And we should get around 9.13 meters per second squared. Okay. And then part E, it says, what is the acceleration of gravity that the Earth experiences from the satellite? And you might think, oh, if they had the same force, they must have the same acceleration. But that's not correct. Since the Earth is a lot more massive, the, uh, the acceleration of the Earth will be a lot less than that of the satellite. So we're going to do the same thing. Force of gravity is equal to mass times acceleration of gravity. Uh, and the force of gravity that the Earth experiences is the same, 4,563.8. But the mass of the Earth is very different. This is going to be 5.97 times 10 to the 24 times acceleration of gravity. So the Earth is going to experience a much different acceleration of gravity. 
Uh, it's going to be equal to, let's see, 5.97 times 10 to the power of 24. We should get around 7.64 times 10 to the negative 22 meters per second squared. And this should make sense because the satellite is so small in comparison to the Earth, it's barely going to move it. It's going to barely have any kind of effect on the Earth. So that's why it's so tiny. It has 21 zeros in front of the 7. All right, let's look at part F. And uh, there's a few ways to do part F. One thing that we should know, and, and one thing that we should know is this force of gravity. This is force of gravity is what allows this satellite to move in an orbit or in a circle like this. So we should know force of gravity is equal to force centripetal, which is equal to mv squared over r. Another thing that we should know is this acceleration of gravity. This is the same thing as the acceleration centripetal, which is equal to V squared over R. Okay, So just know this. You're going to see this quite a lot in this. Um, you're going to see this quite a lot in this chapter. Uh, so personally, I'm going to use this acceleration of gravity to try to find what this velocity is. Um, you, don't, you don't have to. You could use the force of gravity formula if you wanted to, and you'd still get the answer. But I'm going to use the acceleration of gravity. So we know acceleration of gravity is 9.13. That means this will equal V squared divided by R. And again, this R is how far it's separated. So that's 6,605,000. And let's see what we get for the velocity here. Uh, 9.13 times 6,605,000. Square root of that. And we get around, the satellite's going very fast, around 7,000. 765 meters per second. Okay. And last part here, the period. So how long is it, uh, how long, how long does it take the satellite to go all the way around the Earth at uh, one time? And what we should know is uh, the, how, how we're going to do this is speed is equal to distance over time. But we should know that the distance in this case is the circumference, which is 2 pi r over t. So we should know velocity is equal to 2 pi r divided by t. And how we're going to do this, uh, maybe I'll erase f here. We're going we're gonna to try to do this. We know the velocity uh, is equal to 7,765. And this will be equal to 2 pi. The radius is 6,605,000 divided by the period, how long it takes to make one circle. I'll put the period right here. So this answer will give it to us in seconds, since we are doing this in 7,765 meters per second. Let's see, 2 pi, 6,605,000, divided by 7, 7, 6, 5. And so what we do is we get a period of 5, 3, 4, 4 seconds. So 5,344 seconds. That's how long it takes for the satellite to go all the way around the Earth. And if I want it in hours, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 60 to get minutes, and then I'll divide by uh, 60 again to get hours. Divide by 60, divide by 60, and we get 1.48 hours. Okay. So yeah, satellites move very, very quickly around the Earth. And it's very cool. So they can see multiple sunrises and sunsets because they're going around Earth very quickly. Or, uh, so this is a great example of breaking down the problems, um, but we're going to do one where the problem isn't broken down as much. So let's look at this next one. Doom, doom, doom. Okay. The Earth revolves around the sun once a year at an average distance of 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. Use this information to calculate the mass of the sun. Okay, so... And another thing we should know is it takes one year to go all the way around the sun. So this Earth is orbiting around the sun like this. And we want to find how fast is it orbiting around the sun. It seems like we don't really have any information. We only have this radius here. But one secret information we should know is that it takes one year for the Earth to go all the way around the sun. And we know one year is 365 days around and that one day is around 24 hours uh, is 24 hours and one hour is 60 minutes 
and one minute is 60 seconds. So we can find how what the period is in seconds for a whole year. So 365 times 24 times 60 times 60. And then what we can find is we can find that the period is this large number here. Uh, 31 min oh sorry uh three million one hundred and fifty three uh no hold on let me write that again <laughs> sorry about that uh, 31 five three six zero 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 so we get thirty one million five hundred thirty six thousand seconds so now that we know that what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the equation velocity equals two pi uh, 2 pi r divided by t. So now we know that velocity is equal to 2 pi. The radius is one thing we know. 1.5 times 10 to the 11 divided by how long it takes. And now we found that 31,536,000 seconds. And this will give us the answer. So 2 pi times 1.5 times 10 to the power of 11 divided by 31,536,000. Zero, zero. And we get around 30,000 meters per second or 29,885 meters per second. And okay, that's how fast the Earth is going around the sun. Now it says, what is the centripetal acceleration that the Earth experiences? So we again, we should know that centripetal acceleration and acceleration of gravity is the same thing. And this will be equal to V squared divided by R. So what we can do is we can find the centripetal acceleration by doing V squared, which is 20, uh, 29,885 squared, divided by how far it is, 1.5 times 10 to the 11. And let's see what we get for that. So 1.5 times 10 to the power of 11. And we get a number of 0 0.006 meters per second squared. And it should be tiny because the Earth is so far away from the sun. Okay. Last bit here is we're going to try to find the mass of the sun. So what we should know about this problem is we should know that the force of gravity is equal to G, mass of Earth, mass of sun, divided by how far they are squared. So we're trying to find this mass of sun somehow. One thing that we're going to do is now that we found the acceleration of gravity of the Earth, we're going to use this for to help this out. So I'm going to change this force of gravity to be, um, how I'm going to change it? I'm going to change this to be the mass of Earth times acceleration of gravity that Earth experiences. So I don't know what mass of Earth is, but good thing is it cancels out. I do know acceleration of gravity, 0 0.006, which is going to be equal to 6.67 .6 times 10 to the negative 11 times mass of Sun divided by how far they are from each other squared. And let's see if we can find the mass of the sun. Times 1.5 times 10 to the power of 11 squared, divided by 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11. Oops, hold on, 0 0.006 times, I think I did something a little bit wrong. divided by 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11. Yep, and we should get around 2 times 10 to the 30 uh, kilograms. And that's how much mass the sun has. Okay. All right, uh, let's go to the last problem for this uh, video. What we have is Jupiter completes one revolution about to axis every 595 minutes. What is the radius of the orbit required for a satellite to revolve about Jupiter with the same period? Okay, so probably not what Jupiter looks like, but uh, it's okay. Uh, let's, let's try to figure this out. So what we're going to do, again, we're going to look at the base equation. Force of gravity is equal to G, mass of satellite. Yeah, mass of satellite, mass of Jupiter, divided by how far they are from each other squared. And what are we looking for? Where's the orbit? So we're looking for what this R is. So um, what we know is the mass of the satellite uh, times the acceleration of gravity. 
gonna give us G, massive satellite, massive Jupiter, R squared. We don't know mass of satellite. Um, we don't know mass of satellite here. Um, we do know mass of Jupiter. We do know G. We don't know R. We don't know acceleration of gravity. But one thing we do know is we can change this acceleration of gravity to be V squared over R. Just like we could change this force of gravity to be force centripetal, mass times velocity squared over R. I change acceleration of gravity to just be V squared over R. Good thing is one of the R's cancel out. But this is where it gets a little bit tricky. But this is a problem you'll kind of see a lot. We should know that V is equal to 2 pi R divided by T. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to substitute that 2 pi R divided by T into this equation. So I'm going to have to square everything. So this is going to be 4 squared, 4 pi squared, R squared, divided by T squared is equal to G, mass of Jupiter, divided by R. Okay, and you're going to see this a lot, so try to get used to that. Some other things, let's uh, find what T is. T is equal to 595 minutes, but let's multiply that by 60 to get 6 seconds. If we do 595 times 60, we get 35,700 seconds. Okay. Uh, I'm going to isolate for this R. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do R cubed is equal to g, which is 6.67 .6 times 10 to the negative 11, mass of Jupiter, which is 1.9 times 10 to the 27, times t squared, I'm going to put to the numerator on the other side, which is 35,700 squared, divided by, I'm going to do pi squared, uh, times 4. Okay, and all of this is going to give us R. Um, so we can have R is equal, maybe I'll do R cubed first because some students might have a hard time with that. So 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11 times 1.9 times 10 to the power of 27 times 35,700 squared divided by, make sure to put parentheses with the pi because if not, it's going to think you're multiplying pi squared times 4, and what we get is going to be 4.091 uh, times 10 to the 24 meters cubed. And what we want to do is we want to isolate this r, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this to the power of 1 third. What that is, we're just putting the square root of 3, or not, I guess it's not the square root, it's the cubed root. <laughs> but let's find what r is. Power of one third, and what we should get is around the big number fifteen nine nine three eight one four zero point nine meters. That's what we get. Let's see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very good. So this is our answer. I hope that all made sense and that was helpful. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. And next time we're going to be talking about art of oh conceptual questions. So I